As a review, before we get to rotations of actual objects, let's go back to measuring angles and really make sure that we're solid on this point. I know that we've done trigonometry review already, way back at the beginning of the course, but if we go, I'll spend a little bit of time here measuring angles and how the unit circle informs what our units of measure for angle, I think we'll be a little less alarmed when we start using lots of trigonometric functions like the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. So remember that one of the ways that we define angles is using the unit circle. That's a circle with a radius of 1. So here's a circle. I've just drawn it on the page. It's got four quadrants. If we think about an XY coordinate system and the center of the coordinate, the uh, center of the circle is right at the center of the uh, coordinate system. X equals Y equals 0. So this circle has radius of 1. That means if I draw any kind of line that goes from the center of the circle out to its edge, it always has one unit of length, and that's called a radial line. That thing can be moved in any old direction, like this one up at about 45 degrees or so. And I can move it around like this. It'll always have one unit of length. Anywhere that we stop this line, we can form a little right triangle. So let's do it right there. Now the two dotted lines form the vertical and the horizontal sides of a triangle. The hypotenuse of the triangle is the radius. Since it's also the radius of the circle, then that hypotenuse has a unit length. That's because, again, everywhere that goes from the center of the circle out to the edge of the circle always has one unit of length. But what about the sides of the triangle, the vertical and the horizontal, or the, the height and the base of the triangle? What lengths do those things have? Well, it turns out that these lengths are going to be related to the angle that that line is making up and around the circle. So the angle theta, with the Greek letter theta, uh, is always measured in degrees, or we also use the, uh, units of radians. The bigger that angle is, the more that's going to change the size of the, uh, the, hor the base and the height of the triangle. The length of the side adjacent to theta, sometimes called the base, is given by the cosine of the angle theta, and that's called cos theta. The length of the height, uh, the side opposite to theta is called sine of theta. So there are different units of angles this for this angle theta. There are degrees and there are radians. There are others as well, but these are the most popular. Degrees are kind of an arbitrary uh, unit system. Actually, it's kind of like the British system, but in this case it's the Babylonian system. In the case of the Babylonian system of degrees, it actually uh, goes way back to their calendar, which had 360 days in it, and so they called one revolution uh, 360 degrees, just like a year is 360 of their days. It's kind of, it turns out to be, a, of course, an incorrect uh, calendar, but uh, it's kind of an arbitrary system, and for some reason we still keep using it because it's very popular. The other system is called a radian. So you remember that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius, and that's the distance around the circle if you were going to walk around a circle. If you're talking about the unit circle, then the circumference would just be 2 pi times 1. And then if you walked all the way around the unit circle, you would have walked a distance times of 2 pi. If you'd walked around half the circumference of the circle, you would have walked around pi. And if you'd walked around some general distance s, well, s will always be a distance s equals r theta, where r is the, unit, uh, is the length of the circle, and theta is some angle measured in radians. So the bigger theta is, the further around you walk around in the circle. And in this unit system, one revolution of 360 degrees is also known as 2 pi radians, which is about 6.24 radians, of course. So let's try to really get good at measuring some angles in degrees or in radians. There's lots of angles you could always uh, try to write down, but there's some that probably are worth knowing. Notice that 0 degrees is also equal to 0 radians. And that corresponds to when your radius line or radial line points along the x-axis. So that's 0 degrees or 0 radians. 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4 radians. Now how did I know that? Well, 45 degrees is 1 eighth of the way around a circle. So what I do is I take 2 pi radians, because that's one revolution, and I divide by 8 to get 1 eighth of the way around the circle, and that becomes pi over 4. 60 degrees is 1 6th of the way around a circle. Remember 360 divided by 6 would be 60 degrees. 
So I take 2 pi divided by 6, and that becomes pi over 3. 90 degrees is a quarter of the way around the circle. So I take 2 pi radians, and I divide by 4, and that gives me pi over 2. And I can keep doing this game. So 180 degrees is halfway around the circle, so that becomes pi radians. And 360 degrees becomes 2 pi radians. So it's helpful to remember these things. If I told you I want you to go pi over 4 radians around in a circle, I need you to be able to convert. How many degrees is that? Because no, you know, very few of us actually think in radians all the time. But it is useful to be able to go back to radians for units.